That was a step play. Yeah. I'm in the planning commission meeting. Uh, I'm looking up here at the. It's time. We, we have a discrepancy here, huh? Well, it's two minutes after, according to <laughs> internet time. Nine o'clock right there. I know you're waiting for the room to fill up, huh? Interesting. Well, one of them's got to be right. Good morning, everybody. It is about 9 a.m. Um, Time to convene the Tulare County Planning Commission meeting for uh, Wednesday, May 10th, 2023. Uh, roll call, please. Good morning. Commissioner um, Lehman advises that he would not be here today. Millie? Here. Brown? Here. Diaz? Here. Whitlatch? Here. Aguilar? Here. Aliman? He's absent. Okay, please stand for the Pledge of Allegiance. <clears throat> I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. <clears throat> okay. Item two is a public comment. At this time, members of the public may comment on any item not appearing on the agenda. Under state law, matters presented under this item cannot be discussed or acted upon by the commission, planning commission at this time. For items appearing on the agenda, the public will be invited to make comments at the time the item comes up for planning commission consideration. So that all interested parties have an opportunity to speak, any person addressing the planning commission may be limited to the, at the discretion of the chair. Uh, at all times, please use the microphone and state your name and address for the record. Is there anybody out there that would like to comment on anything that is not on the agenda today? Seeing none, we will move on to item number three. Item three is a Parcel map public hearings, action on all parcel maps in this section of the general will be heard in one public hearing unless anyone wishes to discuss any one of the items, uh, request that it be pulled for separate public hearing. No staff presentation will be given on any items unless requested. In any case, there will be uh, a separate vote on these items. Uh, 3A is a tentative parcel map number PPM 23-012. Uh, Silviano uh, Gatisa, Gati, Gatisa, I guess, and Ben Mulligan is a surveyor. Uh, is, does anybody need to pull this? Uh, discuss it? Have any issues with it? Uh, I'll entertain a motion. I make a motion. We uh, This is Bill Whitlatch, Catacurl. Approve a categorical exemption consistent with California Environmental Quality Act and state CEQA guidelines pursuant to Title 14, California Regulations 153053 Class 3 pertaining to new construction or conversions of small structures and conditionally approved tentative parcel map PPM 23-012. This is Commissioner Brown, a second. There he is. 
Okay, please vote. Okay, uh, the motion passes five yes, zero no, and zero abstain. What do we do? Okay, guys, the director's report. <laughs> Um, since I'll be the uh, majority of the show today, I'll, I guarantee you I'll entertain you. Anyway, uh, so the uh, just going around the county generally, uh, giving you a heads up on kind of where we're at with different projects, um, uh, kind of some of the, the cooler, more sustainable stuff we're working on. Um, right now there's something called the uh, EV uh, 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 freeway they're trying to create for uh, EV charging stations for trucks. Uh, two of the biggest developers in California are looking at that. Um, right now, they're looking at uh, Delano, and I believe they're supposed to be about 45, 40 miles apart, and so they've uh, really liked the Delano site um, just because of the two trunk lines, uh, Southern California Edison trunk lines kind of come together there. Uh, so, um, where we're almost to the end of the process to get the lot line adjustment that they need to purchase. Uh, and that's uh, why we did that rezone, uh, so that land would be more sellable down there for Z Um And it uh, looks like it's gonna happen. Uh, for a little while, DR Horton was looking at it, but they just couldn't make a go of it because they weren't guaranteed, or they didn't think they were guaranteed the uh, infrastructure from the city of Delano but uh, if it's uh, just a large EV charging uh, station uh, with amenities, it uh, doesn't need as much infrastructure. So that's one of the bigger projects uh, that's probably gonna happen within the next year. Um, and that'll definitely put Tulare County on the map. Um, that's other, right on the, the county line? Or? Yeah, county, the mine road. How, uh, how big is the system, uh, charging system is that gonna be? Uh, they're gonna, um, Fill up, I'm guessing, about uh, 15, 20 acres uh, of, of land in between, like it's probably typical uh, uh, truck stop uh, amenities. Uh, they'll have the regular gas station, as I understand it, as well. But uh, yeah, it'll. <coughs> when what we side is it? This is going to be on the, um, it'll be on the east side. East side? East side. So if you look where Denny's at, the next property over. Oh, okay, that uh, great fields right there. The, these regular e, uh, EV charging, not Tesla? Uh, regular EV charging for trucks, if you call it regular. Uh, yeah, not, not, well, necess not necessarily. Tesla, Tesla doesn't play well with anybody else. <laughs> right. That's the problem. Yeah, we, um, as we were uh, finding out from the Omni project. Um, but yeah, the, uh, no, this is, a, I believe, a federal grant um, they got. And uh, uh, the, the two partners, uh, Bryanville, Phil Angelides, have been doing stuff across California for, for decades. But this, this is uh, something a little new. They've been in solar for a while. So, uh, but yeah, they've located sites. Um, so yeah, we're, we're almost through with the uh, lot line adjustment. Hopefully that goes through. Because once they go with the, the hard money, I don't see why they'd stop. Um, and then, uh, as far as our solar projects, um, Rexford Solars uh, broke ground already, um, and they're, they have their second phase, they're moving forward on. Uh, so we actually got a, uh, the building application fees on that one's already over a million dollars. Um, we've gotten a million dollars from a franchise agreement. And then we'll shortly here, hopefully be producing solar so that project is going to uh, help a lot with our budget from now on. Um, and so we're, we're interesting, we got a PRA uh, a couple days ago asking about what solar projects we have in process. And it, we don't have any, really, because we approved them all. Um, and we have people talking, but uh, not too many people coming forward with pure solar. M more battery projects right now than anything else. Um, but uh, You'll start hearing about this. Uh, it is the largest solar right now in, in the U.S. So um, once those uh, arrays start going up, and, and a lot of them, um, <clears throat> in, in pretty short order, 
I have a, I have a feeling we'll start, start hearing about it. Um, and then right near there was Deer Creek that we approved a, a few years back too. So in, in between all of that, you know, we're talking, uh, you know, 5,000 plus acres. So <clears throat> it's gonna it's gonna happen pretty fast. It looks like, and uh, again, it's a long-term revenue source for the county and for the resource management agency. Karen, what yes. happened to the battery? Uh, facility we had in Goshen. We approved that a long time ago. Uh, go, uh, the other side, uh, uh, the other side of Visalia, um, by the uh, oh, so by uh, SCE. Um, the uh, still moving forward. I haven't heard that the. It's interesting. Rexford's moving so fast. These other projects are moving at kind of a typical pace. <laughs> seem seem a little slow. Um, but yeah, there's a, a few battery projects uh, coming online, and um, interestingly, en interestingly enough, the Adams Broadswell, who works for the electrical unions, uh, is now looking at those battery projects and now looking at five megawatts and above. So they're really getting down into the really getting down into the weeds, um, which is unfortunate because there's a partnership. <coughs> that's been talking about doing local solar just uh, uh, for the cities, local cities, and even they might get slowed down by the, the union, labor unions, um, which would be unfortunate. Um, so hopefully they'll find a way to work with them uh, and not have to pay too much above what they would typically pay. Uh, as far as uh, some of our lar larger efforts, we do uh, we are still working on the uh, HMP, the Hazard Mitigation Plan for the, the county was approved um, by Cal OES, but uh, not all the annexes, not all the cities were approved. So we're rushing quickly to get them approved too because everybody's going to need, uh, they'll get their FEMA funding regardless because we're in process, but they're, they're only going to give us about a year and a half to, to get that done, and that's when most people who do apply for FEMA regular grant funding, um, that's when that money is going to start coming down. And it's when they actually receive the money, they have to have their hazard mitigation plan in place. Um, so we're working pretty hard on getting that done. Um, I think we're already getting pretty close to getting Woodlakes. That will be the first one, first annex done. And then our flood commission will hopefully be the second one. And then the bigger cities of Tulare and uh, Porterville, uh, Visalia, just because they have potential needs as far as uh, flood control. <coughs> uh, so we've been working on that. And the, the original goal was to tie it all together as part of the adaptation and resiliency plan in the general plan as part of our safety element. Uh, that kind of took a, <coughs> um, a step backwards. Uh, just to make sure we got the hazard mitigation plan through. So now we're going to return and revisit that and try to comply with all the uh, new guidance from uh, the Office of Planning and Research regarding those adapta adaptation and resiliency plans, uh, which hopefully we've done enough in our HMP that's not too much more work, but I have a, I have a feeling by the time we get that approved, they'll increase the, uh, what they, the guidance. Um, the demands, and so <clears throat> the goal is to get that all done with the housing element and the environmental justice element uh, right around uh, December uh, of this year. So it's uh, a lot, a lot to take on, uh, but I think in between Chuck Fizzledilsky and Susan Simon, we'll be able to achieve all this, uh, and uh, to make. Things even harder now with the housing element, they want uh, a longer review time, so we have to get it done sooner. So uh, again, it's, uh, it's getting tougher and tougher with all the ha new housing requirements, with uh, new sums requirements, so it's a, a little bit more work than ever previously expected. So uh, again, end of this year is when we'll be moving this stuff through here. Um, be interesting with the environmental justice element on top of everything else, but that that 
should be done about that same time. Um, uh, in regards to regular permit processing, um, some of the uh, more interesting things that are coming online is uh, there will be a solar app. I think I talked a bit, little bit about that, um, where someone like Sunrun could get a permit approval as an app on their phones. Uh, Aaron, is your mic on? Uh, hopefully not. Yeah. <laughs> this. <laughs> I'm just, maybe it's just me. I'm just having a hard time. Anyway, so the, uh, the, sol the solar app um, would allow uh, some run, Sun Run or some of these other companies to get their approvals on the app, uh, not even having to come in the office. Uh, it's kind of just uh, dependent on um, our ability to integrate uh, online payments. Uh, we had tried it for a little bit, had a few errors, and so uh, we stopped it, uh, ready to put it back online. Um, so some things are going to change at RMA uh, as far as the taking in of fees. Um, there won't be any more breaks. All the fees have to come in at the same time uh, to make it work uh, for online payments. So we're making sure those things are in place. Um, and then I, we're working towards uh, updating our website because it's all one big ball of wax as far as the technology, updating the website and the forms so someone could fill them out easier online. Uh, and then uh, looking at some of the websites around the state, you know, how you look at your website and how you look at your forms is really important. So we're going to borrow from a few other counties here and uh, try to integrate all that together with our online payment and portal uh, features we have. Uh, we're moving towards something called Bluebeam uh, reviews, which are uh, PDFs generally, but w without versioning. So someone can continuously change it without having to kick it out for another review. Um, when these things are all in place, I'm hoping within the next six months, um, I think you'll see a lot, <coughs> a lot faster turnaround times uh, for us. Uh, but at the same time, as I've seen, <laughs> faster turnaround times make people more willing to put in more projects because they're getting them out faster. And we're pretty streamlined as it is, um, just uh, uh, more philosophically, psychologically. Uh, but to, uh, to get that technology in place would really uh, make it a little bit easier, take a lot of the, the stress to get stuff out on timely because it will just automatically flow. Um, so all those things are... are coming in, uh, we've been working on it for a while, you know, it's been, ever since I've been here, we've been working to update our um, permitting process, so those things are, are luckily finally coming into place, um, but yeah, it's just working out the hiccups that uh, keep us from fully going there quite yet, so. How about hydrogen, have you seen much? Uh, I've seen one. Uh, one in Goshen. The, the one at Goshen, um, that was uh, oh, 76. Uh, interesting to see those those folks uh, interested in getting uh, hydrogen grants. Uh, <laughs> um, but yeah, that, that was the one I, I've worked with so far. I haven't seen too many more uh, that have actually gone that far to actually have a conversation. So the hydrogen is like uh, for uh, uh somehow batteries, recharging batteries, it's uh, not a you know, typical gasoline engine. So. Uh, right. Um, so the uh, hydrogen fuel um, is, so the hydrogen engine on the cars that they'll fill. Um, and uh, from the technology I've seen, uh, you know, you get the uh, equivalent or better than a battery. Um, just not too many hydrogen fueling stations around. I think there are people who are very concerned about the the uh, potential impacts from it, and but they're actually better than uh, um, gasoline as far as the, the impacts are less if there is an accident or anything like that. Um, so I, I just, no one's really adopted the, the practice yet of, of using it. Um, otherwise, it would probably take over battery use even Pretty, pretty quickly here, uh, moving away from gasoline. So um, it's a start. Uh, I think that's probably got a 
and I look how long it's taking us to get to <coughs> EV, you know, it's going to be, a, I, I would guess, almost as long to get to pretty typical hydrogen. You know, I'm, as many a developer used to say, it's all AV32 and all these air GHG emission rules, you know, it's really about the, the pipe, you know, <coughs> on the car. It's not, if you get rid of that uh, exhaust, you know, then we're good. You know, there isn't anything to really mitigate. <coughs> so, good thing you're a lawyer so you could explain all this stuff. It's complicated. <laughs> well, and it's, uh, you know, I, I, uh, I've been kind of following that technology for the last decade, um, but the uh, haven't seen it growing that much. And even when I used to uh, <coughs> work in the governor's office, you know, back 2003, they were passing laws about uh, um, forcing um, basically the car sellers in California to go 50% electric by 2011. Obviously, that, that never happened. That was a law in the books. Um, so, so we'll see how far we get. Uh, I think, uh, obviously, the industry's the car manufacturing industry is really, really getting into this now. So it's the fact that uh, Brian Bell and Phil Angelides see enough of a market here that they actually believe that these trucks are going to be forced to be electric, you know, and that they will have to sit there, you know, for 45 minutes to get charged up. <laughs> and there's not enough electricity in this area except for where the down in Delano to actually charge that many that many trucks. Um, I know uh, Western Milling was uh, definitely looking at having a green fleet, and that's why they put their CNG station in Goshen. Um, haven't seen too many trucks and yeah, filling up there uh, yet. Um, but yeah, I think uh, I think there is a belief that this time around it's it's going to happen and it's going to be forced to to make it happen. I have a truck dealership. Uh can't say who exactly, but anyway, uh, they are they are obligated to sell so many electric trucks a year, right. and so they're looking for new locations. The interesting thing is, is that there'll be a like the Pony Express, you go so far, then you'll just get another truck and another truck, uh, mm -hmm. but still that adds more time. The idea is to get it to Arizona or California and transfer the load, which is more time, but on a regular diesel truck. So. Uh, just means one thing to the consumer, you're gonna pay more, so. Right, right. Um, and then hopefully it balances itself out and people find a way to get the, the price down, but yeah, on the initial uptake, it's gonna, it's gonna cost. Um, one of the other interesting uh, things to discuss would be the uh, um, flooding that's still occurring. Uh, and our debris program. So we're, we're not seeing too much more snow up there. Uh, there was concerns about Alpa and Allensworth. Uh, we don't think it's gonna make it down to impact them too greatly. Um, and uh, the, uh, uh, the flows for White River, um, Deer Creek uh, are going down to, to a point that uh, <clears throat> might not be a problem for Tulare County. Uh, Kings is going to continue to obviously, uh, that lake's going to continue to expand. So, um, but yeah, as far as Tulare County is concerned, I, I don't think there is the uh, <clears throat> the uh, emergency uh, nature of it's uh, definitely going away. The um, and then as, as far as being in remediation mode where we're at now, uh, the debris program has been uh, fairly successful. Uh, I'd say uh, uh, we've picked up more debris than we an anticipated over the, uh, the thousand yard marker. Um, not necessarily construction or demolition debris, but a lot of vegetative debris. Um, but I think we've got the, the most major piles that we uh, made. Uh, there might still be some out there that we're not aware of yet that the farmers have made. Um, but the, uh, the yet yeah, as far as working with Cal OES and, uh, and um, 
The Army Corps of Engineers actually uh, follows the trucks around too to, for on behalf of FEMA. Uh, we, we've definitely done all we can do in that regard uh, as far as messaging and getting out there um, <clears throat> and, and across the board. And it's it does affect us because uh, Kevin Sullivan, our main site plan reviewer, is is out there. So I mean, it does slow us down a little bit as far as getting our our permits out. Um, having to put so much effort into this, but at the same time, uh, we don't see it stretching on for too much longer. So, uh, been successful there, and um, yeah, now the next part is actually going after those grants from FEMA to get those <coughs> improvements in place and um, getting uh, looking at how much it's going to cost to do the the full improvements. So. Are we doing success? Are we successful at moving water around storm drain basins? Is that uh, I see storm drain basins that are empty? And well, I'd say like if you drive around Visalia, uh, yeah, um, but but the ones that uh, TID uh, has had since the 50s, uh, those were those were made for for reclamation purposes, um, and and. So those have been pretty full. Uh, if you drive around uh, Alta Irrigation District, they've had quite a few put in place um, successfully. Um, I know uh, Thule area um, has some that have popped up more recently. They're pretty full. Uh, if you go in 198, uh, as you go towards Hanford, uh, obviously those uh, that have been built over the last few years are, are full. Um, so we had discussed previously um, what that looks like as far as Sigma, it's probably uh, it's not as much as uh, we have forecasted as far as water balances. I mean, we need to build uh, every bit of what we ask for grant money for and then some to, to get that balance. So, we, you know, you could have the stick or the, the carrot, the carrot being the detention bases, build those, or the, the stick, you know, people who end up using less water. So... Uh, because we weren't able to build those so quickly, the state you know, has kind of pushed us to use the, the stick. Um, and hopefully that'll burn the lesson up as we get more of these basins built. But the, the money's here. Like I said, a lot of these things are in design. So it's just a matter of getting from the design to the construction stage. That could take, you know, two, two three years still. But, um, yeah, it was unfortunate to watch all this water going to a big basin, but I'm sure that big basin is going to get a lot of, a lot of Sigma credit. Um, so hopefully that, that works out for them too, because right now DWRs, um, we've been talking at the uh, technical advisory committee level and also at the, uh, um, <clears throat> the overall GSA level about our incomplete letters from DWR and the sense was we also have this five-year milestone in front of us that we have to have a, a water model for, which they we ha don't have a water model yet that they've kind of accepted. <clears throat> but they want us to do mitigation measures now to be complete. So I think the, the idea was we're not going to be able to do both at once. Um, probably won't even make the five-year necessarily with the model. So let's just take care of what we can take care of. And I think DWR has agreed with that approach. The problem is DWR never really tells you what you need to do to get complete. They'll know it when they see it. Uh, so, and on top of that, it's the state water board who's really the ones who's the uh, adjudicator here, not, not DWR. But uh, from what I understand, understand, DWR has been in the room discussing, <clears throat> I think are uh, kind of the worst the worst fear is obviously if they come down and take over. But the uh, other part of it is uh, um, once they set a hearing, we'll, we'll, we'll have 90 days to be able to respond. And hopefully within that 90 days, we can put these mitigation measures together enough. I know uh, East Cahuilla was putting regulations together to show that they are that far progress. But really, it's just getting the three uh, Cahuilla sub-basins to, to do work in that agreement so it is all aligned and the problem is they have different sustainable yields 
and because of that, they're not showing uh, concurrence amongst themselves, and I think that's what the, the state really wants to see. Uh, so everybody's <clears throat> moving in that direction now. How are you doing on employees? Do you have plenty of planners? We got Sandy, but he can't do it all. So, uh, employee-wise, um, um, Austin uh, left us uh, fairly shortly after he got hired, so I'm looking to replace him. Um, and then we also uh, Marisala. Um, she went over to the city of Visalia. She had was our most experienced uh, person at the counter. Um, <clears throat> so we've hired some more people to train, but she had nine years of experience, so kind of starting over again. Um, but yeah, as far as uh, I think with the way the economy is and the insurity of it, we're not going to be looking to be able to add more people, but we're seeing our project count go up so sharply right now, uh, we definitely could use more people. So, I mean, the, the <clears throat> we'll always look towards the quality of a project, but uh, the reality is it's the speed by which we get it out that we lessen the complaints. So, um, and there is an expectation now, I believe in Tulare County, that we will be able to continue to process the same amount. So, we can. The, the problem is it's just uh, as a proportion of what comes in. So that proportion is starting to, to slip a little bit just because we are seeing more projects come in, uh, probably more than we've really ever seen. Um, <clears throat> so good how you've hired back a, a people who have retired, brought them back. You know, so like build, there's more to it than just planning. There's also the building of inspection, <laughs> so you can bring some of those people to experience and then that really should help you out too. So. Yeah, we're, we're, we're doing that. Uh, Jeff, Jeff Dearborn uh, um, was uh, extra help uh, during COVID. He, he left and now uh, we're, we're bringing him back. Um, but yeah, I know it's going to be tough to get Dave Bryan off uh, from Royal Grande to, to come back. But <laughs> some people, when they retire, they really do retire. <laughs> especially from county service. So that, that is a possibility, always a possibility. The door's always open. We just haven't got that much interest. Yes, for as big an area as you guys have, I'm saying you're doing a really good job. I also appreciate that you can, I can call you and you, you answer the phone. And so that's, uh, that's a big help to me when I have people have questions. So thank you. Well, you're welcome. Um, I don't really have anything else to report. You got a pay raise. Now. I see. Uh, I see the uh, casino opened up in Porterville. Yeah, I heard. Yeah. That's uh, anybody been there? I haven't been there yet. No, that's uh, that's big. Uh, that's gonna uh, help a lot uh, with the economy in that area. Um, <clears throat> as far as uh, hopefully it, it bleeds off more. Uh, it's the unfortunate thing a little bit about the casinos is the, the money kind of stays there, but I, I, the, the bleed from projects like that do, do help the local economy. Um, and there is uh, interest down the Porterville area. We're seeing a lot of uh, development interest. Um, <clears throat> we might have our early Mart project coming back uh, with uh, uh, Brian Ennis uh, on that Dillon property off Washington. Um, just got another uh, <coughs> um, map, uh, tentative map. It's going to change it up a little bit. So there is that development interest along that, that southern area. But yeah, we need some more, uh, I think, some more big projects to keep the uh, <coughs> sales tax revenue continuing to grow instead of getting, getting stagnant. I see that uh, the new casino in Porterville, uh, they're, they're offering... I don't know where they're going to get it, but uh, a wa water, wastewater, I mean, a water plant to create more uh, potable water. Um, I that was just in the newspaper today. But. <clears throat> well, and uh, what, one other interesting thing, wrinkle, is uh, Goshen CSDs. Uh, been told by the city of Visalia that they may not have the capacity to expand uh, the CSDs uh, boundaries. So, um, kind of waiting 
city says it'll be like six to eight months to do a study. Uh, <clears throat> we have development interest in Goshen now, uh, uh, obviously uh, with the uh, G4 uh, Fowler Packing uh, project and a uh, couple of home builders. Um, to me, Homes is already talking about their fourth phase all the way through, so that'd be you know 300 more homes, but that's within the capacity. But the, the fear is that consumes all of, uh, <clears throat> it's not really that the city's got, you know, 50% more capacity in their wastewater treatment plant. It's really the uh, biosolid loading uh, that's heavier than uh, expected. And so that's what they're going to be studying. Uh, and I have a feeling the studies are going to come in showing uh, that they might not, they're going to have to do something to, to remedy that. Obviously, the fix is throw more money at it, um, and I think there is the willingness to do that. It's just uh, we're trying to hit this market right now, you know, as far as the home builders. So we'll, we'll see what we have to do. There will be some interesting concepts as they the projects come through here. Just kind of giving you a heads up on that one. But that's all I got. Okay. Anybody got anything else? I sent uh, an email that there's... Um, the B Ridge or something like that that wants to meet with me. It's kind of new for me. I don't know. What was that? It's a, it's a renewable energy company that is thinking about doing projects and they want to meet with me. I don't know. Okay. Is there a big issue with that? or? No. no? Well, unless well, you... Talk to us after the meeting. <laughs> huh? Talk to us after the meeting. All right. That's what I want to have. Just when you come and back to sit and make a decision on their, their project there. And I see Maria officially resigned then from the commission. Is uh, we're going to go with the alternate? Uh, or yes. Um, and I don't know when that appointment was going to happen or uh, looked like it was going to happen in fairly short order. Okay. What is it? Valero. Valero. That's right. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay, item number five is a planning commission discussion items and request for future agenda items. Anything that the commission would like the staff to research and bring back or discuss. All right, seeing none, we'll adjourn this meeting and we'll uh, con con convene back Excellent. Uh, May 24th. 24th. I will be here? Yeah, well, okay. I'll be in Texas. I remember off the top of my head. Are we off?